Hi viewers, this is Salahuddin with lecture number 12. In the previous lecture, we talked about uh, <clears throat> some other topics. And as we have started this session and will continue it uh, in a proper order. Uh, today we will talk about the cabinet system of government and the development of the cabinet system, how the cabinet evolved with the passage of time, what are the characteristics of the cabinet, uh, what are the latter developments of, in the cabinet system. Uh, this question is really important from the examination point of view. Mm. Uh, if we check out the previous papers, we definitely come across this question many a time, how the cabinet system uh, uh, evolved. Uh, and further question can be set from many dimensions uh, regarding this topic. This topic, uh, what I mean is really important, if we see. <coughs> so, uh, Today we will talk about the cabinet system of government and its development. Uh, if we see uh, cabinet, previously uh, the cabinet is uh, derived from a word known as cable. And this word cable is the aggregation of five ministers of that time not the ministers of today's uh, time. Uh, the cable is the aggregation of, of the names of those ministers who would uh, hold specific uh, and a very favorable place in the king in the king uh, private meetings. In the name of those ministers from where the word cable and then after cable the word cabinet is uh, derived so the name uh, names of those uh, ministers uh, were uh, Clappard, uh, Air Langton and Buckingham, Ashley and Lord Derridan. So if we see the first words of these five ministers uh, the first word of uh, uh, Clappard is C and then Air Langton is A and Buckingham is B and the fourth Ashley A and the Lord Riddle is the fifth word. So this word, uh, uh, mm, the first alphabet of each name make, makes a word uh, known as cable. So the cable is basically, uh, the cabinet is basically derived from the cable. We will uh, talk about it uh, in detail in the letter. In letter. So um, coming to the uh, meaning of the cabinet system, uh, the uh, cabinet system, fine. Uh, English word, uh, cabinet is an English word which means a small room or a cabin. Uh, this uh, word first used for the Council of Ministers by Charles II. And of course, you know about the Charles II who came after Chrome well in 1653 uh, and who would confer uh, with his minister an important state affairs in a small room. So this was uh, uh, the situation uh, in, in the cabinet where King would conduct private meetings with some personal confidant or with some personal people in those uh, uh, in with the help of those specific peoples the state affairs would be uh, uh, conducted uh, thus uh, this is the meaning of the cabinet system now we are going to talk about the characteristics of the cabinet system what were the characteristics of this cabinet system? Uh, there are basically five major characteristics of the cabinet system. We are trying to make it brief and short, just to give you a hint, otherwise you can read uh, it in detail somewhere, but I am giving you hints of those characteristics of the cabinet. 
The first one was the minister was chosen by the majority party in the House of Common, in the Parliament. Sorry, uh, the minister uh, are chosen from the, the. This is we talked earlier in the after the glorious revolution uh, at the uh, when the glorious revolution took place in the ministry would form so definitely they would form the ministry from the majority of the party so the ministers would be taken from the majority of, of the parliament second important characteristics of this cabinet system is the leader of the council of ministers is called the prime minister and the Prime Minister will chair all the meetings and uh, uh, the ministers even are nominated and appointed by the PM or Prime Minister. Uh, he would chair the meetings, he would nominate the ministers and the person who is doing all this is known as Prime Minister. This is the second important characteristics of the cabinet system. The third important characteristics of this cabinet system is the cabinet uh, works on the principle of joint responsibility, which means if the PM resign, definitely the entire ministry shall resign. So this joint responsibility was another characteristics of the cabinet system. And fourthly, all the affairs of the cabinet are carried out secretly. None minister can criticize it and even he cannot talk of the, the whatever uh, the minister has talked in the private meeting uh, with the with the people outside. Fifthly and most important one, uh, the cabinet minister uh, are not responsible to the king. The minister shall not be responsible to the king they are responsible to the parliament so these are the characteristics of the cabinet system meaning of the cabinet system and now coming to the second part of the question and that is the development of the cabinet system of government how the development of the cabinet system means where the cabinet develop definitely and, and that cabinet would carry the the government so coming to the, uh, the the development of the cabinet system <clears throat> if we see uh, it is not originated at any specific time nor did it owe its origin to any 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 specific any specific person or particular time uh, it uh, is it has developed by a slow and steady uh, process right so there is no specific time and not any particular person played his role in the evolution or, or the development of the cabinet system of course we can trace the development of the cabinet system under the following headlines <clears throat> First, if we see the development in the 14th and 15th century, definitely we should start it from that time. Uh, when the members of the parliament nominated some of the advisor, advisors of the king, the parliament would uh, nominate some advisors of the king. And with the help of those advisors, the king would conduct the affairs of the state. But this system was very much in vague. It was not clear. And this system run for almost uh, less than four decades. If we see it started in 1404 and until and 1437. Uh, so this was, of course, the initial stage and the first phase of the cabinet system. Parliament was there and it had uh, no uh, apparent rule in the running of the government. Uh, then coming to the development and the stout period. Stout period as we talked about the stout, the, the stout were, the, were those who until uh, glorious revolution, the era 
and that glorious revolution is known as the stout period and definitely it starts from uh, 1640 to uh, 1688 till glorious revolution <clears throat> when the uh, members of the parliament uh, uh, right so it, uh, the the development in the stout period starts from the uh, 1640 to uh, 1688 uh, in this meantime we also talked about the revolution not the glorious revolution and another revolution that took place before the glorious revolution uh, where civil war was fought and of course bloodshed, bloodshed took place in that revolution and uh, Charles, was, Charles I was executed and brought Cromwell back to the throne of England and then uh, and thus the process continued till glorious revolution. Uh, Cromwell uh, during his reign from 1649 uh, and uh, to 1658 uh, um, he made uh, the council of state which was responsible to the parliament. This was the first stage that he formed a council and that council was respond was was accountable to the parliament and <coughs> uh, according to some historians if we see uh, the origin of the cabinet system can be traced from the cabal cabal ministry of charles ii charles ii was the brother of james ii elder brother and uh, uh, and the meeting in this era in this time in the in the tenever uh, the reign of charles ii the meeting would take would take place in the chamber of king and that meeting too would uh, be in a sense uh, would be conducted very private and very secret uh, as we talked about the cable, this 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 cabinet is derived from the cable, and we also talked about the cable as as well in the previous, just before. Uh, so this uh, ministry uh, does not show any similarity to the uh, modern cabinet. Today, the uh, the modern cabinet is very much different from the previous one, but those were the. Uh, initial pages and this is of course the second development that took place in the stout period and that is of Charles II and Cromwell uh, then the next page in the third page is the development during the reign of William and Mary uh, we talked in detail about William and Mary and I also told you in the previous lectures that start uh, um, uh, watching these lectures in a in, in, in order and I have given the others uh, like lecture one lecture two and lecture three and in this way in this way thus uh, it is very much necessary to read or to to weave or to listen to to these lectures in a proper order so that you um, have no problem in the in the events and the developments is coming to the development of the cabinet in the cabinet system government in the, in the time of William and Mary uh, William and Mary when they came in power of, uh, as a result of glorious revolution of course William formed a ministry uh, in the first ministry in uh, from 1688 to 1695 uh, he would take ministers from all from both the parties, the 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 Tory and the Whig. But later on, in 16, uh, 1696, uh, he took all the ministers from the single party, and that was Whig, because he would face problem while running the system, while running the government, because those people were very different and and polarized in their views in all aspects. Thus, it was difficult for William. So, in the next election he took all his ministers from the uh, Whig ministry so taking ministers is we talked in the previous lecture and the characteristics of the cabinet system uh, he took all ministers from from the single party 
mm-hmm. Whig, which was quite uh, easy for William to run the government. So this mm, this peg, the taking ministers from single party, was really uh, influential and effective in running the system. This was another development in the cabinet system of the government. Uh, then coming to the development during the reign of Queen Anne, uh, when Queen Anne came in power, uh, under Queen Anne, the minister began to be chosen from majority from the majority party, as uh, William would uh, conduct uh, the the state affairs in a way to to make it more smooth. So it is really necessary to take ministers from the majority of the power, majority party. Uh, the Queen had uh, to nominate his ministers from the Whig ministry, though he had liking for the likings for the Tory party. Uh, Queen Anne and Tory party, they were both were very much similar in their views, but it was really a uh, uh, norm now to take minister, ministers from the majority of the power. So this also sh- shows that the king was highly uh, restricted and his uh, his rule was very much confined or uh, or limited to to his own to his or her own realm or his own uh, general uh, discipline. Uh, <clears throat> the Whig, uh, because uh, the Whig had regained the majority again, so thus all the ministers were taken from the single party that was Whig party. So what is the point here? The point here is Queen Aid had liking for the Tory party but due to the majority in the House of Common uh, she had to take the ministers from the Whig party. This was another development in the cabinet system of government. Then coming to uh, the, uh, the development during the reign of Judge 1 and Judge 2. Uh, as we talked in detail in the previous lectures that Judge 1 and Judge 2 both were ignorant of the English language because they were German, Hanoverian. Uh, they, mm, they were ignorant of the politics, rituals, rights, norms, culture, politics. So they were ignorant of all these cultural aspects of the English people. So they uh, left all the affairs of the state in the hands of those ministers. And in, in those ministers, the person who is more sharp, shrewd, and um, he would chair the meeting uh, meetings of those ministers. And of course, the person who for the first time chaired the meeting of the minister uh, ministers in the absence of king uh, was Walfall in seventeen. 21 and he is known as the first prime minister of the UK. Uh, George 1 and George 2 they were ignorant of the English language therefore they would remain absent from the meetings. Thus the person who is more influential, he is more shrewd and active, he would chair the meetings of the uh, ministers, uh, ministers and that person would be called PM, prime minister. So this is another important development in uh, in the evolution of the development of the cabinet system. And then another important development that took place in of the cabinet system was the um, the, uh, the principles of the cabinet system under Walpole. Now under Walpole was more influential person, and he came in seventeen twenty one. He devised some strategies, policies for the cabinet system that the cabinet system should adopt the following policies or the following principles. Uh, among those principles, a question can be also put in this way here that what were the characteristics of the Walpole cabinet system? Uh, so, Coming to the topic in the uh, in the point here is the characteristics of the Walpole cabinet system. Uh, the first one, 
the principles of the supremacy of the prime minister uh, in the in the reign of Walpole. Mm, Robert Walpole, who got the principle of the supremacy of the prime minister, introduced in England and further promoted the system of government. Right. Uh, earlier, the king uh, was his own prime minister. Earlier, the king was his own prime minister. He would conduct all the affairs of the state. Now the Prime Minister becomes supreme and he would conduct all the affairs of the, uh, of the government. This was the first principal device or uh, brought into effect. That the Prime Minister should uh, be the person uh, who would conduct all the affairs of the state. Uh, second important characteristics of the uh, development of the uh, of the um, cabinet system was principle of political homogeneity political homogeneity means uh, the minister in the cabinet had to be anonymous in their political views they would have no right to to oppose the decision they had no right to criticize the decision of the prime minister and uh, the Prime Minister uh, had the right to remove him from the cabinet if he is criticizing, criticizing the policy of the uh, Prime Minister or if he is in a kind of uh, clash with the Prime Minister in, in, in his policies. And thirdly, principle of accountability of the House of the Commons. Earlier, uh, the House of Commons, they were uh, accountable to the King, they were accountable to the House of Lords. Now the House of Commons, they were responsible and accountable to the Prime Minister. And the fourth important characteristics of the Walpole cabinet system is uh, uh, principle of resignation of the Prime Minister. Uh, in this principle, if the Prime Minister resigns, if the Prime Minister resigns, so the entire ministry shall also resign. This was principle intact in the cabinet system of Walpole. In 1742, when Walpole lost his majority, we can uh, uh, cite this example in this case. Uh, when he lost his majority in the House of Commons, uh, he gave his own resignation and made all the cabinet uh, minister to resign. The prime minister resigned, so shall the, uh, the ministers also. In this way, he led the, uh, he le he the principle that when uh, outwooted, when outwitted all the mem uh, outwitted outwitted when the prime minister outwitted so all the members should shall also resign from the cabinet system uh, from the uh, cabinet uh, <coughs> uh, next development that took place is the development during the reign of george III. We will also talk about George III. He is really interesting personality and we will talk in detail about George III. Uh, he is uh, very different from, the, from his uh, uh, ancestors and very different personality. We will talk in detail in the next lecture, God willing. Uh, George III uh, severely mm, uh, blew the cabinet system. He was again trying to become the king as James II would try and Charles I, Charles II would try. He, he would try to, to bring back the past glory of the, the, the stout dynasty. He was very stubborn and he, uh, uh, he would say that the previous Judge uh, I and Judge II, they were ignorant of the English language and 
this was their incompetency that the, the, the things are, the realms of the government gone in the hands of the, the prime minister. And he was trying to, to, uh, to make the prime minister puppet in his hands. Uh, uh, he would say that the previous uh, kings, they were ignorant of the, uh, the culture of English, they were ignorant of the English language and they were ignorant of the, um, the society. So it, is, it was their incapability that things gone, uh, gone in the hands of prime minister. So now I I do know all these things, I think, so it should be brought back into my hands and, and I'm the person to rule this country and I'm the king now. Uh, so, but what happened in the end? Uh, and what he would, what he would do here, what kind of uh, blow he, uh, uh, the, the cabinet system, uh, received what kind of blow the cabinet system re uh, received in the um, reign of judge three uh, judge three would nominate such ministers who are puppet in his hands who are puppet in his hands in this regard he uh, i must mention the name of those puppets who whom he would made his prime ministers and would uh, those men, prime minister would play in the hands of the judge three. Among those was uh, uh, Butte was one of them. Uh, Lord North was another person, and uh, and some other uh, names are there who would be um, puppet in the hands of judge three. But what happened and. Uh, uh, how the the cabinet system evolved in the in the reign of judge three then if uh, he was trying to uh, for uh, to fold the thing back into his hands uh, so and even uh, took place in that was the american war of independence in the american war of independence in 1783 um, uh, severely blew uh, judge three's rules uh, because uh, this res the, the, the responsibility was uh, loaded on the hands of Judge Three that it was because of your decision that we lost the War of Independence of America and there was uh, also financial loss, there was also human loss and a severe blow to the image of the Britain. So the fit the younger came to the uh, become he bit the younger uh, became PM and uh, he regained the prime ministership or he became or he um, regained the previous glory of the uh, prime ministership. So the in the later uh, developments, if we see how later it was developed. Uh, the successors of Pitt, the younger, uh, like uh, the Peel, uh, Pellmester, Gladstone, Deserly, and uh, some other uh, influential personalities are there uh, who add much to the development of the cabinet system. Uh, in the 19th century, the cabinet system in England uh, had become so stable that even France, Germany, Japan, Italy, and later on in India, the same system was adopted. And thus the cabinet system become more modernized, become more um, effective in those countries. Thus everywhere this system almost is adopted that the affairs of the state are run through a cabinet. So this is all about the cabinet system government, uh, the development of the cabinet system. We talked the characteristics of the Walpole ministry we talked about. In, in the previous lecture, we will talk about another important issue. So this is all about this topic. 
thank you for watching the video and if you have any question you must ask in the comment 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 section i'm there to reply to your question so thank you so much for watching the video